Hey guys, Rob or Panics here, and welcome to another tutorial from me. And today we're going to be looking at um, doing some kind of collage. Many of you will see my wallpaper, and a lot of you have asked me how I do it. So here we are. Uh, I'm going to kick off with something a little bit different first. Um, it's related, so don't hate me for this, but here we go. As I was saying, something a little bit different. Um, I'm showing you here today is this. Let's see if I can just get a decent shot of this. Um, it's my new iPhone case. So it's my iPhone. Bear Twitter notifications. And as you can see, it's got what I have on my desktop on my phone. And it goes round the side. It's Chris's face. And round the other side. That's the other side of Will's arm. And actually, it's really, really good. I was a little bit sceptical. Um, I'm just going to pop it down down here while I talk. Um, I was a little bit sceptical about it to begin with, but actually it's fantastic. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just saying that. Um, I said from the beginning that if I didn't think it was up to scratch, I would review it and give it a negative light, but actually it is really, really good. It's nice and hard. It's, a, it's nice and glo glossy. And actually the print is pretty damn good. Um... You, it goes all the way around the side, which is one of those things that most cases don't do. So I, I was pretty happy about that. And um, better still, I've got three uh, voucher codes to give away, each for a fiver. And um, a discount for you guys. So if you guys want to buy one, if you go to Raps, um, I'll put the link in the description. I think it might be raps.com. Um, they they are actually fantastic. I'm not I'm not one to sell out and plug stuff I don't think is good or just plug it for the money because the truth is I'm not being paid anything. Um, the only thing I was given is this and a couple of vouchers. But actually I'm going to give the vouchers to you guys. So um, I've I've wanted one of these for a little while actually. And they they do other things than iPhones. They do Blackberries. They do sort of um, stickery type things for laptops, iPads, everything. So it's actually it's, it's a really funky service. So. Um, what I'll do is I'll pop the link in the description and we're going to crack on with the tutorial. So I'll see you guys in a sec. And so there you go. That was Raps. Um, they're the people that did my um, iPhone cover. And actually they've done a really good job. I wouldn't have done this uh, review if I didn't think that they'd... Well, I wouldn't have given them a positive review if I didn't think they had. But actually they've done a fantastic piece of piece of stuff. So let's... um. Let's crack on with the tutorial. So what you're looking at right now is actually my desktop. And this is the kind of thing that we're going to learn to create today. So first of all, we're going to open up Photoshop. And we're going to create a new canvas. Now the best thing to do is to create it to the size of your screen. So if um, you're on a Mac and you go to the, your display preferences, open displays. And it should bring up on each of your displays. I've got two. It will show you, uh, yeah. They've changed it. Okay, they've changed it from what um, you used to be able to do, and you used to be able to tell what size your screen was. But you can actually, if you screenshot, press Control. Uh, there's a Windows have a button called Print Screen. Press your Print Screen button, then go into Photoshop to create a new thing, and it should have your dimensions already. Or you can press Command, Shift, and three, and you should hear a little click. I've got my headphones off, so I don't know. Uh, let's go to pictures, max screenshots, and let's put them date modified. Here we go. So this is what, I think it's this one. No, it's this one. Uh, here we go. So this is what size your screen is. And what you want to do is just, if you uh, if you drag this photo into Photoshop, this will be the exact size of your screen. So if we go to image, image size, mine's 1920 by 1080 because I've got mine on my HD screen. So let's go to file new, 1920. Now I'm not going to make it that big, but th this is the time where you would put the dimensions of your thing in. But we're just going to go for something simple like a, th a thousand by a thousand. That's a pretty standard canvas size. And what you're going to want to do, if you want something like mine, where um, it's quite dark, and just sort of in the background then you're going to want to start with a color now I'm going to go with black but we're going to change it around toward the end and just unlink that layer so that's our background black layer and then what you're going to want to do is I use iPhoto for this so I'm just going to drag it onto this screen here and we're going to open up 
garden photo shoot. This is quite a nice one of my family. I'm sure they won't, won't mind me showing you what they look like. Uh, and we're just going to put a few of them into a thing. So what you're going to do is just drag in photo by photo. Uh, this is quite a nice one. So now obviously, bye mum. That was my mum going to see my gran. Um, so what you want the first thing you want to do is convert it to a smart object. That way, where, however you resize it, it won't change. Um, so we're going to want to make this one. This one's going to be a sort of centerpiece. So let's. I look a bit gra a little bit shit in that one. Um, Ah, uh, it will do. It will do for the tutorial. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to bring up a vector mask, vector layer mask. So this is where your layer panel is. Click on the vector mask tool, which is next to the half moon type job, and you'll bring up your vector uh, layer mask rather. Click on your brush. Make sure you've got a size of about 100, 150, hardness of zero, and your opacity should be about half. You can go less, but it'll take more time. And then make sure your color is black. Then what you want to do is just start erasing out the bits that you don't want. Um, being quite, make sure you don't have any kind of line on the outside. Um, there are plenty of other ways to do this. This is my sort of favorite for how to do it. What we're going to do is we're just going to keep doing that until basically until it's got a nice sort of feathered edge. Um, now you could do this with sort of rigid edges, but I'm much more of a blurred type guy. Um, so that's the first picture. And then it's actually still a little bit big. So we're just going to press Command T and then just resize it down a little bit. And you'll notice that it, the um, quality will stay because you made it a smart object and your vector mask will go with it. So let's go for one where it's uh, my brothers and me. Let's drag this one in. Let's drag this one in. Oh, oh dear, that's that's not such a good one to me, but I don't care. I'm I'm not one of those guys that's embarrassed about what they look like. I'm more than happy with how I am. So, oh, that's tiny. Uh, but we're just going to make it like like this big. I mean, I look a bit shit in that one, but tough tough bananas. And you're going to do exactly the same, but this time we're going to lower the opacity. So you can sort of see where my dad's legs are and where sort of various bits that we want to kind of see in that one. So let's start blurring out mainly on the bit you want to see first. So that's the important bit to get right. And then the other bits can just fold away into the background. Now you'll be layering these. So you'll eventually come to the point where you've got quite a nice sort of overall composition. That's what you're striving for. Now here, I want to keep my brother's arm and head, but I want everything else to blend. So what you want to do is go back into that layer, but with white. And you're going to take your brush size down and then just zoom in and start blurring back where his hand is. Just where his arm is so you can get his arm in nicely. Uh, and then his head. We'll just bring out his head. And my younger brother's head. My younger yet massively taller brother's head. Uh, and there we go. So that is those two photos. Uh, in fact, it's still not quite right. But... It's looking quite good. Bring the opacity back up, and there you go. It's looking, it's looking pretty good. It's getting there quite nicely, and just keep making sure it's nice and smooth and and going. Just bring your brush size back up to a hundred and hundred and thirty, hundred and forty odd. Let's just turn my fan on. Hopefully, this doesn't make too much noise for. Ah, no, I've got it unplugged. That's why my process has gone mental. Um, let's get one where. I think there's one of my father in a tree. Here we are. This is my 52-year-old father in a tree. He's um, a judge. And this is what we do in our spare time. We're quite a close-knit family. And actually, that's going to be the, com the, the topic of my next uh, pod... Uh, what, they, what did I call them? Profound podcasts. So let's have him... Just about there. Let's bring the opacity down, and you're going to want to position him around, like let's position him so he's hanging just over the top of the, everybody else, and the branch sort of comes out. So same again. Bring out the vector mask, and just start. I'm going to bring the opacity up so I can at least see what I'm blurring out, and just start blurring out. Now this is it's quite time consuming, and for a really good piece, you're going to want to spend time on it because it's it it really is worth it. You you end up with um something that's really quite special. And 
is a good indication of I don't know like I've got all of my mates on mine and um some who like Chris who's gone to Italy for a year so it's a nice way of sort of every time I turn my laptop on seeing him and and sort of missing him almost a little bit um if Chris is watching this I don't miss you at all mate um troll face but yeah so just make sure every time you change the opacity that you bring it back up so you know you're not doing it over the top of something and here we go so this is this is make quite a nice sort of gift card at Christmas not gift card like greetings card if you wanted to send one to your family or something like that um, it's just something a bit interesting to do with photos and to learn basically to learn how to use um, layer layer mask so again I've just brought the brush size down um, and I am picking out my brother's arm because it's nice to have sort of bits that overlap and so let's just make sure his torso is there but the rest is it's actually looking really quite nice and that's just three photos in imagine if you had everything that my one has like that um, but what you're going to want to do is we're going to now look at making it a background you don't want it to be too obtrusive if this is for something like a gift card this would be lovely and you could add some more photos in around but actually you want to make it look nice and sort of it's got texture and depth but you don't want it obtrusive so you can do that with a gradient map so you put gradient map the half moon and it'll immediately do it to a black and white most likely this is where most people do that sort of purple and orange one uh, but we'll start with black and gray and what you're going to want to do is just put these in a group so group all of your images and then just take the opacity down and there you go and if you think that there's a bit that you think might be a little bit nicer a bit brighter you can go in let's say I want to brighten up um, my brother here my my middle brother so go to that photo click new layer and then in between the two layers while holding alt click on it and it will create um, a clipping mask or you can right click create clipping mask and what that does it it'll only overlay it on that so if I did white up here nothing happens but if I do white down here you can see it so let's just delete those two brush strokes so you know guys know what I'm doing and you're just gonna wanna bring up the brush a little bit and if you're trying to make something brighter make use a white brush and uh, so just just do his face my face a little bit and my little brother's face and his arm and then you're gonna wanna set it to overlay and there you go it's immediately a little bit brighter now you want to play around with the opacity and get it just right and the opposite works for darker as well so if you want this area a bit darker then go for it darken it up and actually you can start to get something quite quite effective and quite sort of deep now black and white is is always quite nice but it's a little bit boring um, but black and white doesn't have to be where you stop if you go into your gradient map double click on it and then just click on your actual the gradient and stick a color in halfway let's go for a nice blue look at that now everything's a nice blue or if you wanted to keep it sort of the colors you could make your gradient map a little bit lower see the more you lower it the less it goes away from the blue but it's still got that sort of nice tinge or you don't have to go to black completely you could maybe change your your darkest color come on to say a dark blue so let's let's pick out a nice tempered blue there you are that's not black that's that's a really nice because off black is really really tasty it it shows you've got a little bit of elegance and what you could then do is in the background um just brush out so make your brush humongous not that big um and then press turn on caps locks so it changes where's halfway am i being a bit retarded yeah i am um, just drag your rulers down if you don't have your rulers on press command R or control R and then just drag a guide down then create a new layer above your background and with caps lock on you will see it goes from your whole brush to a little point you can get it exactly in the middle and with some sort of tweaking that will actually look quite nice and you can you can have some really really cool effects um, this probably looked a little bit better with a darker blue so there you go 
that is actually how I made my background. And it, it took the most time it takes is actually picking the photos you want. Uh, so that's really, really easy. Um, like I said, if you are if you want to make yourself a background or you fancy um, an iPhone cover like mine, then head over to wraps.com. Um, if you use the discount code ROB25, that gets you 25% off. Um, and I made sure that it was a nice saving for you guys so you didn't feel like I'd mugged you off with a video where I was just promoting something. Um, and I'm not being paid per sale, it's nothing like that. But um, I'm just promoting a decent company that actually do some good stuff. So, yeah, this, it's, it's a great cover. Um, and it's a nice way to, to personalise your desktop. I, I, I love my... I love my desktop because it means I can sort of see stuff and my grand's on there and my family's on there and all my mates are there and actually it's just a lovely way to do it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. You probably got a better look at my family now. I don't think they'd mind me showing them. Um, got nothing really to hide to be honest. Um, yeah, so I've been Robert Panics. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and you guys can make some interesting backgrounds. If you do make one, tweet me at Panics. Um, and I'll have a look. If you have any questions, let me know. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.